very good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening my dear friends, welcome to this TKM 2 class or lecture number 2 and as you remember we had just started about giving a very brief introduction about general statistics and we said that we will continue for 2 or 3 classes um, and then basically go into the depth of TKM and design of experiments. So, continuing the discussion further, we were um, uh, discussing at length at the last fag end of the first class about property mass distribution, probability density functions and uh, then the, the concept of say for example, uh, um, uh, CDF values, cumulative distribution function of the less than type, greater than type and how we could basically understand the uh, CDF for the regress the greater than type, less than type considering that you are rolling a die and your main focus is to find out the CDF values for all the faces which are coming up less than equal to 4 or uh, greater than 4. So, we will basically try to find out the concept and, and further and concept, uh, extend that for future discussion. Uh, now, consider this, we have the following data related to the size and the number of 30 families in the city of Jaipur. So, they are basically 2, 6, 3 and goes to the last two numbers and uh, so on and so forth till 3 and 3. Now, the question is how do we represent the data using the tally numbers, frequencies and cumulative frequencies. The main focus is frequencies. So, these, these obviously we know, but I am not going to go into detail. So, you find the num write the number of family numbers, write the tally numbers which is the second column. Then F i is basically the frequency which I have been mentioning about time and again frequency, relative frequency, chance and the probability in the long run. So, the frequencies are given in the third column starting for uh, number of family members with 2, the number is 3, then family number 3 is 7, family number of size 4 is 10 and the last one mean being family number with size 7 being 1. And if you find out the less than type or greater than type, then the corresponding <coughs> addition of the, of the frequencies are given. So, it basically starts which is the second last column starts from 3 to 30 and for the last column basically goes in the reverse direction because you are trying to basically add up all the properties from the um, for the greater than type and they basically come down from 30 to 1. So, if you draw the curves you have the ojai curves if you remember we did in class 11, 12 and in statistics. So, the midpoint of the ojai curves of the less than type, greater than type gives you the median, you can find out the median, this is just for information and from there we can find out the other information. Now, guidelines for depicting frequency tables would be the classes should be mutually exclusive and exhaustive, the number of classes should be neither too, too small, too large, as far as practicable the classes should be of equal length. So, that means, when you are taking classes rather than any one number consider that you want to find out the number of family members who have between 2 to 4 both inclusive. Then obviously, it can be the 2 members in the family, 3 members in the family, 4 members in the family. Then the next group would be 5, 6, 7 and so on and so forth. So, the class intervals are 3 and you do the problems accordingly. The following data represents the uh, re relates to the height in centimeters 40 individuals starting from 160.1 till 164.9. We are required to prepare a frequency distribution table, we are required to draw a histogram, we are required to draw the two ojai curves. I am just reading the bullet points. So, you draw the frequency tables for the heights, the, the leftmost column are basically the classes which have been made, one for the first interval is 145.95 to 152.95. So, obviously, the class intervals would be made in such a way that none of the values, any particular value rises at the end at the boundary. So, they have to be either in um, the interval 1 or interval 2. That means, I am considering uh, th them side by side. <coughs> so, they can, they, the values cannot lie between interval and interval 3 at the boundary, cannot lie between interval 3 and interval 4 and so on and so forth. So, the class intervals have to be made accordingly. Based on that, we have made these um, 6 intervals starting from 145.95, I am again repeating till 152.95 and the last value being 180.95 to 187.95. The frequencies are given from 6 to 5 and, and this addition of the numbers in the in that class. Then the cumulative frequency less than type starts from 6 to 40 and the cumulative frequency from greater than type basically st uh, starts from the top to 40 to 5. 
So, if you basically draw the ogive curves, you will get the median and, and, and do the problems accordingly. To draw the cumulative frequency less than or greater than type, first specify the class intervals, then depict the class intervals along the horizontal axis and cumulative frequency is less than or greater than whatever in, in, in the y axis. Against each class interval, mark the point by the corresponding cumulative frequency of the less than type or greater than type, join the points depicting the cumulative frequencies that gives you the ogive curves, find the intersection that gives you the median. So, this is the pro problem which you have solved. So, the, the, the black one where I am just now hovering, so and this is the yellow colored highlighter which I am going, this basically gives the less than type and where I am just hashing it marked. So, that is basically the less than type. So, now we will consider definitions of different measures which are measures of central tendency, mean, um, then which is arithmetic mean, geometric mean, harmonic mean and then is the median, then is the mode and measures of dispersions would be variance, standard deviations, skewness, kurtosis and, and, and all these values. So, we will come to them as we proceed. So, for the mean you can have arithmetic, geometric and harmonic in the arithmetic mean considering the probability of each occurring is 1 by n considering there are n number of observations and each are distinct and the distinct values are given by x 1 to x n. So, the corresponding probabilities being multiplied by x i, i being 1 to n would be 1 by n. So, you basically technically add up all the values divide by n and get the average. For the geometry mean obviously, you know you will multiply them find out the nth power root and basically solve the problem. So, arithmetic mean may be related to the height, geometric mean may be related to interest rate, harmonic mean may be related to the concept of speeds when you are travelling from city A to city B and coming back from city B to city A you want to find out the average speed. So, harmonic mean is given by this formula. So, these we have solved many of these problems when you were small as I said in class 11 or 12 or maybe in some of the schools they are the boards they teach in 10 also. So, arithmetic mean, so this is the symbol which we use, this will become apparent time and again why we are using mu, mu would be a general common variable used to denote the mean whatever the distribution is. When estimating the long term expectation or random variable, the arithmetic mean is a natural choice. Finding the averages, age of the group of person, average income of a group of person, we use the arithmetic mean. So, for the harmonic mean, as I told you, consider a car travels between city uh, distance x between city a n to b with first in, in, in the forward direction from a to b with velocity v 1 and returns back with this and the same distance x from b, b to a and with, with the velocity v 2. So, if you want to find out the average velocity, you can find it out as given in the formula. So, you see that you use the, the harmonic mean. Uh, for the uh, for the for the case of harmonic mean, other examples are designed uh, for the stream of flow estimation for waste load allocation or estimation of effective petroleum and geophysical properties on the on uh, of a heterogeneous porous material. You will basically use the the concepts of harmonic mean. For the geometric mean, suppose you have an interest investment which earns 10 percent in the first year, 50 percent in the second year, 30 percent in third year and we are interested in finding an equivalent average return R. So, you basically find out if given P is the principal amount. So, the, the total amount of money which you get back after the first year considering the interest rate is 0 0.1 would be P into 1 plus 0 0.1. So, that is 1 plus 0 0.1 in the bracket as shown here where I am just hovering the the um, uh, this pointer. Then it will be if we, if I invest take out that money again invest in the second year it will be multiplied by by the by the interest rate uh, corresponding interest rate of the second year which is now uh, 50 percent. So, it will be 1 plus 0 0.5 that will be multiplied by the first term the money which you get back and you basically go correspondingly. So, if I want to find out the average interest rate it will be p into 1 plus r to the power n. So, here it is 3 years, so it n will be 3 and you can find out r. So, which comes out to be 28.9. So, the median and the mode definitions, uh, they would not be used so much in, in, uh, in the design of experiments, but we will still, still uh, define them for our own convenience. So, the medium of a data set is the value below which lies half of the data, which means the probability is being di divided at that point into 0 0.5, 0 0.5. To find out the medium, we use the this capital F as we know is basically the, the CDF value. So, the 
CDF value till that point, the sum of the probabilities till that point will be 0 0.5 or 50 percent. And mode will be given, the mode of a data set is the value that occurs most frequently. So, hence we will use the value as given that uh, the maximum num number or, uh, for which value the frequency or the relative frequency of the probability the highest and we will find out that value as the mode. Mode is may not be may, uh, unique, it may be, uh, there can be more than one modes also. So, definitions of the variance, standard deviation and skewness are for dispersions, or we will use these three terms, but mainly we will be using um, standard deviation or variance. So, variance is given by the expected value of the average of the square of the difference. So, in each term we take the difference between the realized value and the, and the average value, square it up and add them or you find out and multiply by the corresponding properties or add them and divide by n whatever it is or in the case of continuous case it will be an integration. So, standard, standard deviation will be the square root of that and the skewness and kurtosis are given as the formula. They are just, I am giving you just for your interest rate, we will utilize that if at all required in the, in the later cases. So, consider we have the following data points 5, 7, 10, 7, 10, 11, 3, 5, 5. From these data, data points, we have mu value as 7 and then mu e as 10, mu naught as 5 and so on and so forth. So, based on that we find out sigma square is comes out to be 6.89. Now, what is a random experiment? So, a random experiment is an experiment whose outcome cannot be predicted with certainty. So, um, so consider you are rolling a die or you are tossing a coin or you are picking up chits from a box. So, in that case, it is a random event because you, we do not know which uh, what will be the value of the outcome. So, we, so, the random event or the random value or the random variable would be the case based on which you are doing the study and the realized value would be the actual value of the random variable or the, the event. Sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment and sample points would be the elements of the sample space based on which you will try to find out how many sample points are and they can be infinite also in the actual sense. Well, event is a subset of the sample space as the collection of the, all, the, all the sample sets or points corresponding to the experiment which you are divide, um, trying to basically find out. So, say for example, I am rolling a die. So, the, the sample points would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, now if my event or an experiment is to find out the even number only, so the numbers coming out favorable would be 2, 4, 6. So, the collection of those sample points would be 2, 4, 6 based on which we will do our experiment and we will define, define the event accordingly. So, probability. So, probability of an event is defined as a quantitative measure of uncertainty of the occurrence of the event. Objective probability basically would be defined on the game of chance and which can be mathematically proved or verified. If the experiment is the same for two different persons, then the value of the objective probability would remain the same, it would not change. It is the limiting definition of the relative frequency because if you remember we are taking the chances of the relative frequency in the long run as I increase the number of observations, the sample points goes to infinity. So, that limiting ratio basically is the probability. Example can be the probability of getting the number 5 when we roll the, uh, the fair die. Fair die means unbiased die. So, if you roll it, so the probability we know is 1 by 6, but actually it would happen that is you keep rolling them. In the numerator, we will have the how many number of times the number 5 came and in the denominator will be the number of times we did the rolling or the, the experiments. So, subjective probability is based on the personal judgment, intuition and subjective criteria. It is value will change from person to person. Example, one person sees the chance of India winning a test series with Australia high while the other person sees it is low. So, obviously, subjective. So, it cannot basically be based on the fact that there is some underlying very sound theoretical concept or mathematical concept based on which we can pass the judgment. For a random experiment, we denote the probability corresponding to the value when, when the random uh, value is basically takes one, one um, sample point and that sample point would have basically have a probability corresponding to that which will be denoted by small p suffix i. So, obviously, if I collect all the probabilities for all the sample points, so it should be 1, that is point 0.1, which is basically given in, in the last bullet point where I am where I am pointing my finger. 
And if I want to find out say for example, any if set A corresponding to the event E or A. So, obviously, it would mean that I add up all the probabilities for all the sample points which are under that set A and basically add it up and find out the probability. So, now here is what, what I mentioned are the, here are the important points, I am just repeating it. So, probability of the sample point is PI is the probability of occurrence of the sample point, whatever the ith one is and P A is the probability of the occurrence of that event corresponding to, th to, to those case where you add up the probabilities of the, all the sample points which are, are a constituent assembly of the event. And obviously, the probability of the universal set that is addition of all the uh, sample points probabilities would definitely be 1 and for the null set obviously, it would be 0. Suppose there are 2 dice each with faces 1, 2, 3, 4 till 6 and they are rolled simultaneously. So, there are 2 dice, this rolling in the 2 dice will constitute our random experiment. So, these and the values of the universal set can be in the first roll you get a 1, in the second roll or the second die you get a 1. Other case can be in the first roll you get a 1, second roll you can get a 2. So, if you find out all the combination it will be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. Now, if you basically go into the next stage, it will be I roll that first die it comes a 2. So, corresponding to 2 you can have again from 1 to 6, then corresponding to 3 again you have basically 1 to 6, corresponding to 4, 4 means 2, 3, 4 I am basically meaning the outcome for the first die, to corresponding to 4 it will be again 1 to 6, so this 1 to 6 are basically for the second die, then for 5 it is 1 to 6, 6 it is 1 to 6. So, if I basically find out all the combinations it will basically start if you see the first bullet point from 1, 1 to 6, 6, so 6, 6 is here. So, if you want to denote the case that when you roll the die, the two faces are same, that the total combinations corresponding to that experiment or event would be uh, the set 1 1, that is 1 1 1 sample point, second one is 2 2, third is 3 3, fourth is 4 4, fifth is 5 5, sixth is 6 6. So, the collection of that event basically satisfies the, the, the experiment which we have done. So, you define the events in such a way that the outcomes for each die equal equal in one simultaneous row, then A would basically be as I said 1, 1 to 6, 6. So, if I want to find the probabilities, so each of them would basically be uh, 1 by 36, because 1 by 6 is the probability of getting either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, considering the unbiased die. Similarly, for the second one, it is also 1 um, uh, for, for all the values from 1 to 6, 1 by 6. So, if I find out the probabilities, it will be 1 by 6 into 1 by 6, which is 1 by 36. So, I want to find out the probability of that getting for for this experiment which I just defined of getting the the numbers coming out in the phase 1 of die 1 and uh, phase of die 1 and phase of die 2 are equal. So, obviously, there are 6 events. So, it will be 6 by 36 and the whole probability would be 1 by 6. Second example is suppose a coin is tossed repeatedly till the first head is obtained and we have the mu as the um, uh, the the first head obtained the the, the the value of the the universal set is basically if I get the first head, so or if I get the first head in the second uh, throw, if I get the first head in the third throw, if I just get the f first head in the fourth throw, and so on and so forth. So that means you can continue till infinity. So the overall universal set would be the sum the, the sample points would be h or th or or means sorry, so it should be basically a combination of all, all the points. So, so, third point would be T T H, fourth point would be point means the sample points would be T T T H and continues till infinity. Now, if I want to basically um, find out the, the corresponding probabilities, so I want to find out that we, we need to define an element that at most, at most 3 tosses are needed to obtain the first head. So, 3 tosses at most needed being I get head in the first, I get head in the second, I get head in the third. So, obviously, the probabilities would be in the first case for the sample point would be half, for the second sample point would be half into half, so for the third sample point would be half into half into half. So, if you find out all the probabilities, it comes out to be 7 by 8. So, the classical definitions of probability defines that under this definition, we consider the following sample space is finite, all sample points are equally likely. That is, they have equal probabilities of occurrence or equal relative frequency of occurrence and based on that we basically define the problems. In a club, consider there are 10 members of whom 5 are Asians and the rest are Americans. A committee of 3 members have to be formed and these members are to be chosen randomly. 
find the probability that there will be at least one Asian and at least one American in the community. The total number of cases would be 10 C2 and the number of cases favoring the formation of the communities would be given like if there are the um, uh, at least one Asian and at least one American, the combination can be two Americans, one Asians and or two a Asians and one American. So, the combination would be 5 C2 into 5 C1, that is the first case that means consider two American and one Asian and the second case would be one American and two Asian again it will be 5 C1 into 5 C2. So, the total probability comes out to be 100 by 120. So, the axiomatic definition probably says that under this uh, definition we consider the following sample space are infinite, sample points are not equally likely. So, if you remember the problem which we solved like getting the first head. So, the sample points are w 1 w 2 small w 1 sum and small w 2 till infinity, but the corresponding probabilities are different. Because if I get the head the first time the probability is half, if I get the head the second time in the second throw it will be half into half, if I get the head in the third throw it will be half into half into half which is 1, 1 by 2 cube and I cut it loose. Concentrate on that it would mean that the probabilities are, are unequal and we can solve the problems considering them there the axiomatic definition is true. Sample points are not equally likely because that is what I said that uh, the probabilities are half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth and correspondingly it goes on and they are infinite because the total when you will get the head we, we do not know. So, obviously, the set of uh, sample points is infinite. Suppose we continue with example 2 where we have just discussed and we have defined the event B. So, that at least 5 processes are needed to produce the first head. So, the sample space would be either a head, then is tail head, then is tail tail head and continues and uh, the the sample points are it is the head which is stand only the first sample point, then the tail head is the second sample point, then tail tail head is the third sample point and continues. So, the corresponding probabilities are half, one fourth, one eighth and then one sixteenth and if I want to find out at least five processes are needed to produce the head. So, obviously, the head can come in in the in the fifth uh, uh, toss. So, first four are tails, fifth is head or the second one would be first five excuse me five are head sixth is uh, uh, five are um, uh, tail sixth is head. Next would be first six are tails seventh is head and it continues till infinity. So, if I want to find this it would be better if I subtract the particular value what is that particular value I will tell you. So, I basically I get the head the first time the head the second time, head the third time. So, first, second, third, fourth what I mean is basically I am getting in the first trial, second trial, third trial, fourth trial. So, I basically add these values and subtract this value from 1, I will basically get the answer. So, it as is given 1 minus in the bracket P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4 would give me the answer. So, in theorems in probability is that for any event A and B being a member of the universal set, the probability of P if, uh, on any event between is always between 0 and 1. If A is a subset or a proper subset of B, then the probability of A would definitely be less than equal to B because probability cannot go negative. So, it has to basically increase. It can be 0. So, obviously, in that case P A is equal to P B. Then the con concept of, of, the, of the union set, so probability of A intersection B. P A would be plus P B would be basically intersection B would be P A plus P B minus the overall area common between A and B and P A complement would be 1 minus P A. So, if it is a complementary set and A A complement plus A is the universal set then the probability of A would basically be 1 minus the probability of A complement or vice versa. Probability of an, a null set is 0 as given the last point and the probability of the universal set is 1. So, we will basically discuss now mutually exclusive. So, consider n events a 1 to a n they are mutually exclusive if no two of them can occur together which means p, p a i intersection a j is equal to 0 for any a i n j being a member of n. A mutually exclusive ex exhaustive would be considered an n events a 1 to a n they are mutually ex exhaustive with at least one of them must occur which means the union of a1 a1 union a2 union a3 dot dot till a union an would basically be 1 so suppose a fair die with faces 1 to 6 are rolled 
the universal set, uh, set obviously would be 1 to 6. Let us define these events accordingly. So, A 1 is given by 1, 2. So, the sample points are 1 and 2. A 2 is given by the sample points 3, 4, 5, 6 separately. A 3 is given by the sample points 3 and 5. So, if I basically look at A 1 and A 2 and A 3, so I will basically can define the following. The events A, A 2 and A 3 are neither mutually exclusive and exhaustive. A 1 and A 3 are mutually exclusive, but not exhaustive. A 1, A 2, A 3 are not mutually exclusive, but are exhaustive. And finally, A 1 and A 2 are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So, when you are coming to the concept of conditional probability, so let A and B be two events as that probability of B being greater than A, A, A is true. So, it is not a, is a null set. Then the conditional probability give of A given B would be given by in the numerator you will have the probability of A intersection B and in the denominator you will basically have P, um, P B. So, let me define this. So, assume the universal set is again the rolling um, the rolling of the die, dice, unbiased dice and the numbers are as I mentioned is 1 to 6. So, and now I define, define events A as the event number 2 and B as the set of all the event numbers between, in between, uh, between 1 and 6 which is 2, 4, 6. So, if I find out the intersection of A and B it is 2 and then if I find out that given B has occurred, what is the probability as the A B to occur is given by, if you note down where I am just now pointing my fingers, it will be 1 by 6 which is the probability of A intersection B and <coughs> the <coughs> probability of B would be there are 3 occurrences of the total 6. So, it will be 3 by 6 and the corresponding probability is 1 by 3. If I want to find out the probability of A of B given A has occurred obviously, it will be 1 by 6 by 1 by 6 because the moment A occurs B has occurred. So, the Bayes theorem um, let B 1 to B n be the mutually exclusive and exhaustive events such that P B i. So, there is the P B i's being greater than all of them are, are not equal to 0. And for every um, uh, 1 to n uh, and define A to be an event. So, that is basically the, the conglomeration of the, the, the base the conditional probability is coming into the picture which will be if I consider the overall summation. So, that will make sense that probability of A would basically be the summation of these n elements. What are those n elements? Probability of A intersection B i divided by P B i. So, i tends to 1 by 1 to n. So, I'm, what I have is basically I find out the intersection of A and B 1 that probability divided by the probability of B 1 would be given the first element. Next element which I will add would be probability of A intersection B 2 divided by B 2 and I continue and find out the sum which will give me A. And if I want to find the other way around probability of B j or B i whatever it is given A is given by this formula which is basically the concept of conditional uh, distribution on the Bayes theorem. So, with this I will end the second lecture and continue the discussion till we start the design of explanations. Have a nice day. Thank you.